finally, 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 we can talk about a win. Thank goodness. Like, the more I had to talk about an extended losing streak, I was going to lose my mind. Even though I basically already lost my mind. We all lost our minds. But thankfully, I can finally just talk about a win. And maybe not have the trash on this team for once. Even though I probably will. But still, it feels good to finally talk about a Flyers victory. But before we get into all of that, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to TTP Sports. And the most important thing you can do is hit that sub button. I will greatly appreciate that. So if you are a new viewer looking for all the latest Philadelphia sports news, recaps, and events, this is the place to be at depending on the outcome. So definitely hit that sub button. And also, if you are a current viewer of the channel, I am grateful for you being here that long and looking to continue that down the road. Also, if you're looking for tickets to any upcoming Coming sporting event, concert, whatever you can think of, use the code TTP Sports down below for $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek. So that could be hockey, basketball, NFL playoffs, baseball, whatever the hell that decides to come back, concerts, whatever you can think of. The $20 basically eradicates the fees, and you can use that $20 to buy food, beverage, because you know how much expensive those are at arenas. So definitely you can utilize that $20 and utilize the code TTP Sports for $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek today. So getting into the business today, the Flyers finally get their first win in the year 2022. They snapped their 13-game losing streak with a 4-3 overtime win against the Los Angeles Kings. Not a regulation win. The Flyers still haven't won in regulation since, since December. So, there's that. But hey, a win is a win at this point. We'll take anything that we can get just to talk about a win. <laughs> because I got tired of talking about losing. I really did. I really got tired of talking about this team losing. So, thankfully, we could finally just discuss a game, discuss a win... And just be thankful for that because, honestly, who knows how many more of these nice moments that we're going to have the rest of the season with how bad it has been. So, basically, going into this game in general, hit the, the snowstorm in Philadelphia, we knew the attendance in general has been dipping just because of how bad the team has been and people don't want to show up. We knew the attendance was going to be bad today because of that topped on snowstorm and topped off, I think, the Flyers were allowing people to exchange their tickets so yeah, we were not expecting a big crowd there, and I was also in the press box, so I was able to see everything going on there. Thank you, Jimmy Basco from Flyers Nitty Gritty for giving me this opportunity once again. But yeah, it was weird though, because they closed off the mezzanine level, and then they allowed people who had tickets up there to, you know, they transferred tickets to, you know, sit in the lower bowl, which is a, which is a nice, you know, an, thing to give the people who managed to come to this game in the snowstorm so that's a nice little thing to see there but like we knew the attendance was not going to be that good they were also offering i think free pretzels hot dogs and sodas or whatever like that while supplies lasted so yeah and also um in the press box they were doing something to i guess promote a new um food stand there a milkshake stand and i would have done it i would have got my free milkshake if it wasn't for how freezing it was Really, it doesn't, like, you know, mix well with, you know, one snowstorm, so ice cream, honestly, you don't feel like having that when it's this cold out, and the fact that it was freezing the press box, my goodness, no one in this press box got their milkshakes. I kind of felt bad because the next time I probably go to a game in person and see the prices, I'm probably like, man, I wish I got that milkshake, but besides that, getting a little sidetracked, there's a little snippet there, but yeah, a win, a win. Cam Atkinson, great game today. Isaac Ratcliffe makes his NHL debut. I thought he looked pretty good. Very physical in this game as well. Carter Hart looked fantastic in this game too. And honestly, this wasn't a bad game. Honest, it just wasn't. It felt like both teams, they had a really good pace. It was an energetic game. Very physical. Third period, the Kings dominated definitely. But the first and second period were definitely a nice back and forth type of pace, which made the game entertaining. And the Flyers actually looked like a team that did not want to lose 14 straight. So I can give them credit for that. And I can give credit to a lot of people in this game as well. But I also do think there were, obviously, there's definitely going to be a lot of issues in this game as well, just because the Flyers themselves are not a good team. So you're still going to have those various mistakes going throughout the game. But I would say overall, it was a good game and just basically a sigh of relief, what everyone was saying during the press conference, just a sigh of relief. Scott Lawton said that himself. So yeah, it just felt nice to finally get that win. 
and there was a jump early, and then Konechny got a chance, Quick had to make the save, and then basically it was a buzz for both teams in the period, you get a nice, you know, nice rush for halfway through this first period from the Frost line, Mayhew, Frost, and Willman, get Frost, you know, taking his time, looking for the pass, finds Ristolainen, who does a very nice deke to get past the defenseman, finds Ger Jerry Mayhew, who's wide open, the buried it into the empty net, makes it a one nothing game. That's Mayhew's uh, second goal in back-to-back -back game. So, hey, he's providing a spark, and that line looks like they're, they are forming some chemistry. They have been making some nice plays recently, so it's nice to see those guys get on the score sheet. And the Flyers, basically, it was more of a back and back forth period. The Kings had a power play. Flyers had a power play very late in this first period, which transferred over into the second. So, yeah, one nothing lead for the Flyers after one. You go into the second period, basically more of the same. Carter Hart makes some saves. Kings get some chances. The Flyers get some chances the other way as well. And Jonathan Quick has to make some saves. And Quick today, honestly, did not look himself, even though he, even, like you would expect him at his age right now to you know not play the best. But this season, it's been really a renaissance for Jonathan Quick. And he was really shaky today, honestly. He was coughing up a lot of rebounds, just didn't look like himself. And I thought the Flyers you know, probably should have taken advantage of that because there were a lot of chances throughout this game, especially for guys like Konechny and Scott Lund. They had a lot of out man rushes throughout this game and they just were not able to do anything on that Lindblom had some chances too like you know one of those chances where you're probably gripping the stick too tight you're trying to pass it instead of shoot it it was one of those type of scenarios once again but there was halfway through the second period this was a great play by Claude Giroux basically turning nothing into something so Claude Giroux the Flyers, they're pressuring in the offensive zone. G takes it out because he probably doesn't see anything going on in there. Waits for everyone to come out of the zone. He gets to the center ice, basically, and flips the puck towards Jonathan and Quick. And here comes Cam Atkinson beating out all the defensemen. And Quick, for some reason, he just looked baffled by this you know, play by Claude Giroux. He was not able to hold this puck whatsoever. It bounces off his shoulder and right back into the slot where Atkinson is. And he puts it right into the net to make it a 2 nothing a game two nothing flyers lead so that's nice to see right there but then the uh a little bit of a defensive breakdown the flyers got a chance going with the uh Konechny line out there they weren't able to generate on one chance the kings go the other way i have no idea what yandel is doing on this play same thing with cam york but i blame this more on yandel whatsoever so basically a defensive breakdown turns into a random 2-1-0 for the kings and it's victor arvidsson cutting the lead in half making it two to one so basically, after that Arvidsson goal, it felt like it was more Kings going towards the end of the second period, but the Flyers still go into the third up 2-1. to one. And then, basically, third period was really dominated by the Kings. The Flyers looked like they had trouble getting through the neutral zone. They were trying to, you know, play that defensive game, keep the Kings to the outside, which they were doing for the most part, but it just felt like, once again, are they struggling to hang on to this lead because you're giving them so many chances? When, at some point, are the Kings going to tie this game? The Flyers eventually take a penalty in this period, and I think it was a very soft call on Oscar Lindblom. I think it was for holding, I believe, in the offensive zone. So the Kings go to the power play halfway through this period, and they win the faceoff in the Flyers' zone, but for some reason they just completely miss on the puck. And here comes Cam Atkinson out-hustling everyone once again, and he beats Quick on a shorthanded breakaway. Suddenly it's a 3-1 game there. So you're thinking, okay, okay, you were leading 2-1, to one, then you extended it to a 3-1 lead. Try to close this game out, but then eventually, right after Atkinson scores, it's Victor Arvidsson redirecting a shot into the net, and it becomes a 3-2 game from there. And then we go towards the end of the game, Kings once again still, I would say, controlling the pace of play in this third period. And, you know, they pull the goaltender, they take the timeout, I believe it was like two and a half minutes left in this period, I think, when they took that timeout. They pull Jonathan Quick. You know, they try to get that scramble for, you know, to tie the game late. And the Flyers, they have some chances to get into the empty net, but nothing, like, really clear and concise. So, basically, they're trying to dump the puck out of the zone. Kings bring it back, dump it out of the zone. Kings bring it back. Then you get around to the final minute of this game. Kings are controlling it in the Flyers' zone. They're struggling to get the puck out. And Carter Hart's sprawling everywhere, trying to make every save possible. He's trying to lay on the puck. He's trying to cover it. Kings are getting the puck at the puck 
bounces loose somehow, and it eventually lands onto the stick of Anze Kopitar, who puts it into an empty net because Carter basically having to sprawl everywhere trying to hold this puck, and he basically just gets himself out of position because basically everything is happening at once. The Flyers can't get the puck, they can't control the rebound, and it lands on the stick of Kopitar, who puts it into the net, and ties the game up with 30 seconds left, and basically you were just saying, at that point, of course, of course that happened. The Flyers could not close out a game to where they could have possibly won in regulation. So we go into overtime, and this overtime was dominated by the Flyers. They did. I think the Flyers dominated the overtime from, from the first get-go. The Kings eventually won the first face-off, but the Flyers had control of the pace from there. The Kings weren't really able to get any chances whatsoever. Got Atkinson getting this single-handedly, trying to win the game himself. Just can't beat Jonathan Quick, and the Flyers have so many chances throughout this period as well. They continue to go throughout. Halfway through the overtime, you got Claude Giroux. Looks like, no, it's actually Atkinson. Provorov and Lawton out there. Atkinson throws one onto the net. A rebound pops up to the stick of Scott Lawton, and he manages to bury it past him. And the Flyers win a game 4-3. to three. And we're like, oh, wait wait a minute. They're reviewing it. They're reviewing it just to see if it was actually a good goal. And it, it, it didn't take that long. They said good goal. And they were just like, okay, breathe the sigh of relief right there. Because, honestly, that would have been classic if the refs waved that goal off after the review. That would have been very hilarious. <laughs> so, thankfully, thankfully, the Flyers win this game. 4-3. to three, three stars. Victor Arvidsson, third star. Cam Atkinson, second star. And Scott Lawton, first star. Stats of this game, Kings... 40 shots to 36 in favor of them. The Kings also won the faceoff percentage, 52.8%. Kings go 1 for 3 on the power play, while the Flyers go 0 for 2. Very physical game, 23 hits to 17 in favor of the Flyers. Flyers blocked a lot of shots in this game, especially in that third period. They blocked 20 shots to 5. Giveaways, both teams gave the puck away a lot. Shot totals per period in the first, it was 11 to 7 in favor of Los Angeles. In the second, it was 14 to 12 in favor of the Flyers. And in the third period, it was 17 to 13 in favor of the Kings. And the overtime, it was 2 to 0 in favor of the Flyers. So, gotta win. It's basically all we care about at this point. We don't think, I don't think this is going to, you know, drive into anything right there because we all know at the stake of this season that you're not making the playoffs. It's just nice to, you know, snap that losing streak. It just really is because who knows how many more times we're going to be able to feel like this the rest of the season. Because after this game against the Kings, you have a game against Winnipeg next week before the All-Star break, which you do have seven, day, seven days off. And then you go into another very tough schedule with two games against Detroit, Pittsburgh, Washington. And then you're basically playing a lot of teams that are in the top of division after Detroit, Pittsburgh, Washington, Carolina, St. Louis, Washington once again. The schedule just doesn't get any easier from here. So enjoy this win while you can, folks. And I think basically one of the more important things to take out of this game is for the Flyers because I think Isaac Ratcliffe played a, night, a very solid game. Definitely. Playing on the fourth line with Bonneman and Mayhew, he brought the physicality early in this game and showcased it throughout the entire thing. And that was something that he was lacking down in the AHL. So I'm not sure how much that's going to last, but it was nice to see him try to, you know, bring that out. Try to bring that physicality out and just showcase what he can actually do in the NHL. So hopefully if he does remain with the team going into the next game and doesn't get sent down to Lehigh Valley, Hopefully he can continue that pace, and I think the most important thing for this team is just, at this point, don't focus on trying to make the playoffs. Foc look into next season. Look what you got right now. Call some of these guys up from the Phantoms. Basically, at this point, I don't need to see Couturier. I don't need to see Broussard. I don't need to see Ryan Ellis for the rest of the season because we know this year is lost. These guys, let those guys get healthy, see what you da have down in Lehigh Valley, and see what these guys can do. Give Frost some more time, give Ratcliffe some time, York, Zamula, just see what these other guys got. Same thing, if you do eventually trade Martin Jones, see what a guy like a Samstrom has, and see if he can be a quality backup to Carter Hart. Basically, look at what you have down in, the process, and down in Lehigh Valley, see what are these guys can work out in the, in the NHL, look, look for next season, look to see what you got, and then you also... Figure out your plan going into next year as well. As you look towards this trade deadline, which you're most likely going to have to trade all the way your free agent. So, look in the next season. Make sure it's important that these guys get the reps in the age in the NHL just to see what you can have. That's the most important thing, in my honest opinion. So, I think it's going to do it for this video. It's nice to talk about a win. Nice that I don't have to trash on this team for once. Just, you know, 
wanted to stay away from that just because it's a win and I want to focus on the win. And that's basically all it is because who knows how longer we're going to be able, you know, how many more times we're going to be able to feel like this the rest of the season. So what are your thoughts on this game, everyone? What are your thoughts on finally getting a win? Your thoughts on what I just said about, you know, just trying to see what guys down in the AHL have. Do you think that's something that the Flyers should focus on going into next year? Do you want to see Couturier? Do you want to see these guys like Ellis, Couturier, Broussard the rest of the season? I want to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Same thing with Kevin Hayes, too. Just let him rest as well. So don't forget to leave those thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. I like to read them as always. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. Don't forget to check out the Painted Lines, which I'm a part of. Their links are down in the description below. Also, don't forget to check out the links to Broads Media, the Flyer to Pod merch website, and also Flyers Nitty Gritty. All that stuff is down in the description below. Don't forget to check those out. Like I said at the beginning of the video, the most important thing you can do is hit that sub button and also use the code TTP Sports for $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek. And I will see you next time.